Good morning. Can I welcome everyone to the 11th meeting of the Local Government and Communities Committee in 2019 and remind everyone present to turn off their mobile phones. Agenda item 1 is consideration of whether to take agenda item 5 in private. Are we all agreed? That's agreed. Thank you. Agenda item 2 is a consideration of the fuel poverty target definition and strategy Scotland Bill at stage 2. And I once again welcome Kevin Stewart, Minister for Local Government, Housing and Planning and his officials. Some non-committee members have lodged amendments that will be taken today, and I welcome at this stage Jackie Bailey, uh, and expect others to be in attendance later on. The intention is that we will finish stage two today if we can. If we are unable to do so, we will return to it after Easter recess. At introduction, the presiding officer determined that a financial resolution was not required for this bill. Under Rule 9126C, the presiding officer determined that the costs associated with amendments 48 and 62 would each in themselves exceed the current threshold for a bill to require a financial resolution. Amendment 62 has subsequently been withdrawn. In terms of stage two proceedings, Amendment 48 may be debated, but may not be agreed in the absence of a financial resolution. The presiding officer has also ruled that Amendments 93, 21, 81, 84, 82 and 85 are cost-bearing amendments. However, the potential <coughs> cumulative cost of these amendments would not require a financial resolution. As such, Amendments 93, 21, 81, 84, 82 and 85 and any amendments consequential in these amendments will be debated, but that debate has not already taken place, and the questions put on them as per normal in Stage 2 proceedings. I now call Amendment 99 in the name of Jackie Bailey, grouped with Amendments 56, 61, 163. Jackie Bailey, to move Amendment 99 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you very much. Convener, could I declare at the outset that I'm the Honorary Vice President of Energy Action Scotland, um, along with colleagues, I believe, Murdo Fraser and Gillian Martin. Um, so I thought I would put that on the record before commencing. But I'm pleased to move Amendment 99 and all the other amendments in the group, which all happen to be in my name. Um, those sharp-eyed members will remember Amendment 62, which the presiding officer determined would cost about a million pounds. Um, so I used the week between committee meetings um, to bring forward Amendments 99 and 100 in place of Amendment 62. Amendments 99, 56, 61, 163 all deal with areas to be deducted when determining the remaining adjusted net income when considering whether somebody is actually in fuel poverty. 99 and 100 deal with disability, and I sought advice from SPICE on a more proportionate way of dealing with this, and they in turn took advice from Professor Hirsch, who's known to the Scottish Government and, of course, to the committee. He told us in turn that the Social Metrics Commission had done work on a new measure of po poverty using the level of extra cost benefits in relation to attendance allowance, disability allowance and PIP as an indicator of additional costs. That requires very little research to be undertaken and is effectively, in his words, cost free. Um, it just needs to be built into the Scottish Government's analysis when counting fuel poverty. So I hope that that isn't seen anymore as an impediment to taking that forward. As the bill stands, the second part of the fuel poverty definition includes childcare costs as part of the calculation. And of course, that is welcome. It's right that it should do so. But I think it would be inconsistent and a missed opportunity if the costs that a household has to spend caring for an adult are excluded. We know from the, the government's own statistics that carers experience a level of poverty of about 22%. We also know that poverty is experienced by people with a range of disabilities and both have a read across to fuel poverty as well. We know that care costs have a real impact on household income and whatever generation you're talking about, whether it's childcare or adult care, I believe this should be accounted for in the bill. Convener, it is a very simple set of amendments um, that I hope both the Scottish <laughs> Government and the Committee will accept. Um, in commending them to the Committee this morning, I note that these amendments are supported by a wide variety of organisations. The Poverty Alliance, the Coalition of Carers Scotland, Health and Social Care Alliance, Commonweal, Energy Action Scotland and many, many more besides. I hope the committee will therefore support these amendments. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Jackie. Does anybody have any comments? In that case, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, convener. I'd like to make comments about Jackie Bailey's amendments 
56, 61 and 63, first of all. Uh, at the committee meeting on the 13th of March, uh, you asked me to respond to a list of proposed amendments to the bill which Energy Action Scotland had circulated to MSPs. Uh, as I set out to you, uh, EAS neither sent us their proposed amendments, nor did they seek any meetings uh, with me or my officials to discuss their views. Uh, these three amendments are clearly based on the EA EAS proposals uh, that the bill should be amended to deduct both social care costs and childcare costs when calculating if a household's remaining adjusted net income is sufficient to maintain an acceptable standard of living. Uh, I'm unaware of any consultation having taken place on these proposals. Uh, none of these amendments form any part of the recommendations uh, made by the committee in its stage one report, uh, and they offer no indication of what care costs would actually cover. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, Scotland has free personal care, uh, and as of this week, that policy applies to all adults, uh, regardless of their income, uh, who have been assessed as requiring uh, the need for this support. Uh, this is a key reason why Amendments 56, 61 and 63 are not required in this bill, uh, and I would urge the committee to vote against them. Uh, I'm pleased to see that Jackie Bailey has withdrawn her previous amendment, uh, 62, on a disability MIS, uh, which was not going to be able to be voted on, uh, and introduced uh, two new amendments, 99 and 100. Uh, these represent a, a much better way uh, of taking account of any additional care costs, providing another reason why amendments 56, 61 and 63 are not necessary. Uh, Ms Bailey's amendments would allow for the deduction of relevant care and disability related benefits uh, from a household income. And I accept that deducting these when considering whether a household's income is sufficient to maintain an acceptable standard of living will result in a fairer comparison to the minimum income standard and I'm happy to accept them instead of the previous amendments discussed. Uh, this approach would be in line with other evidence, uh, such as the work of the Social Metrics Commission, uh, which spent over a year considering aspects of poverty measurement and concluded that deducting from resources available the value of these extra care, uh, cost disability benefits was at the best available proxy for the extra inescapable costs of disability. Uh, the combination of this approach to disability benefits uh, with our enhanced heating regime and associated higher required fuel bills for households most affected by the adverse outcomes of living in a colder home, as well as our approach to free personal care in Scotland, will ensure we are taking concrete action uh, to tackle fuel poverty. Uh, that said, uh, uh, as we only got these uh, amendments at the end of last week, uh, the legal team need to run some further checks just to ensure that these cover everything needed, uh, for example, all relevant disability benefits. But I'm assured this would only result in us needing to bring technical tidying amendments at stage three uh, and will not change the policy objective of them. Uh, I therefore urge the committee uh, to vote against Jackie Bailey's amendments 56, 61 and 63 uh, because they are unnecessary, particularly in light of her new amendments 99 and 100, uh, which we can support. It's Jackie Bailey to wind up and press on the throne. Um, I intend to press all amendments, um, convener. I am very grateful, though, that the government has accepted Amendment 99 and 100. Um, and let me make just a couple of very brief comments. I think Energy Action Scotland, in line with all other organisations, <clears throat> did engage with the committee, made submissions to the committee, and I raised some of these issues at stage one when I um, helpfully came along at the, 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 the um, acceptance of the convener um, when the minister himself was, was giving evidence at the time. Um, so I don't accept that these are things that have simply come um, at the last minute. Um, so that said, let me just say, I think it's unlikely we're gonna see primary legislation for a while. This is a once in a uh, generation opportunity to get this right and therefore I would urge members to make sure that we put this on the face of the bill because we I think we all agree that sorry convener I wasn't aware that a member of the committee wanted to ask something oh, sorry, I just, I, I, 
Well, if, if the member would take a brief intervention. I will indeed. I'm grateful to the member. Um, the member said that she didn't expect there to be primary legislation for some while. Perhaps she could clarify what she means. Well, the last fuel poverty target was set um, in the Housing Scotland Act of 2000. Um, so we're talking about considerable period since you know a new piece of legislation setting a new target is before the committee. There will, of course, be secondary legislation. One would expect that. The bill indeed invites that. Um, but you know, in terms of primary legislation, that was the last time a target was set. And this target is, as I understand the committee's view, is to 2040. So it'll be some time before we see new legislation. I'm sure the, the, the member would accept that. Um, so I do think it's important to get it right. Um, and I do think it's important to set out clearly our intentions. Let me leave you with one thought, which is care costs. Care costs are not just about free personal care. Care costs involve free personal care, nursing care, and hotel costs. And it is not the case that all are met. We know from our constituents that care costs provide a real burden on a household and therefore ensuring that this is clear and evident on the face of the bill, I believe is important and I hope members think likewise. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, the question there for us, Amendment 99 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? 99, Amendment 99 is agreed to unanimously. I call Amendment 56 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 99. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. All those in favour of Amendment 56? One. Those opposed to Amendment 56? Five. And abstained. And one abstention. Q there for Amendment 56 falls. The question... I call Amendment 57 in the name of Jackie Bailey, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. Jackie Bailey to move Amendment 57 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you very much, Convener, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to move Amendment 57 and all the other amendments in the group. Again, this is a relatively simple set of amendments. Amendment 57 deals with physical and mental impairment. 58 deals with people of pensionable age. 59 deals with children under the age of five. Let me take these in turn because um, this sets out quite clearly the eligibility for enhanced heating on the face of the bill. I start from the premise that we want to capture all those likely to experience higher levels of fuel poverty than others. And if we are to achieve the target of eradicating fuel poverty, then it is important that we include people with disabilities, pensioners and young children. The question is, as ever, whether this should be on the face of the bill. Taking Amendment 57 first, which covers disability, let me refer you to Inclusion Scotland's submission to the committee and quote from it. Additional costs such as heating are higher because a much higher proportion of disabled people are unemployed and thus at home all day at a time when others reduce their heating. Although disabled people in employment face less additional costs, they are still substantial and on average across the UK amount to £492 a month. It should be borne in mind though that the costs for a Scottish disabled person in work are likely to be higher again um, and that some disabled people linked to their conditions actually need more heat so as not to exacerbate their condition. And of course, I would invite members to just gaze outside today with the weather conditions we're having in April to understand why additional heating may well indeed be required. Amendment 58 focuses on pensioners and the Scottish Government's position is to create, as I understood from the debate with the Minister at Stage 1, a threshold of 75 years before allowing eligibility for enhanced heating. I think it misses the fact that the older people on the point of retirement actually experience a substantial drop in income and many of them are on low and fixed um, incomes as a result of transferring to pensions. At the same time, the need for additional heating as you get older is well documented um, and this is a sensible amendment designed to reflect that practical reality. Turning to Amendment 59, I welcome the Scottish Government's commitment to align fuel poverty and child poverty, but this amendment is needed to reflect the, the fact that children under the age of five are actually at a higher risk of fuel poverty than those over five. Child Poverty Action Group point us to the World Health Organization and the Scottish Government's independent academic panel um, who note that families with young children are more vulnerable to the impacts of fuel poverty and they support the inclusion of all children, including those under five, being included in the eligibility for enhanced heating. Um, 
convener, these are small amendments that have the potential to make a huge difference, and they are supported by a wide number of charities that I won't list in the interests of time. Finally and briefly, convener, Amendment 60 properly gives ministers the power to modify those groups eligible for enhanced heating, um, because this is quite a high-level list, and it is up to ministers to make sure that we are um, fitting and appropriate in future. Um, amendments 64, 96 and 97 set out the need to consult the NHS and patient groups, as they will have expertise and experience of the full range of illnesses and conditions. Citizens Advice Scotland told this committee that there was a need to develop a specific list of health and disability categories, as well as age bands, which would help to identify those vulnerable um, to the adverse health and wellbeing impacts of living in fuel poverty. I hope the committee and the minister will support this group of amendments. Thank you, Jackie. Does anybody have any comments to make at this stage? Okay, so over to you, Minister. Uh, convener, it is essential that the eligibility criteria for the enhanced heating regime are fair and appropriate, uh, and that they identify those households uh, which have a real need for higher temperatures and longer hours of heating. Uh, I'm concerned that Jackie Bailey's criteria are so wide uh, that the enhanced heating regime could end up applying to over 50% of Scottish households, even though not all of them may need higher temperature heating for longer hours. Uh, this would devalue uh, the enhanced heating regime. I therefore strongly urge the committee uh, to vote against all of the amendments in this grouping. Uh, the bill currently provides for the eligibility criteria uh, to be laid down in regulations following a consultation process. It is vital uh, that we develop these criteria with stakeholders and, in particular, uh, those with lived experience of fuel poverty, uh, which is why determining the types of households for which the enhanced heating regime is appropriate is better in secondary legislation. Putting the eligibility criteria uh, on the face of the bill, as amendments 57, 58 and 59 would do, won't enable us to work flexibly uh, with our stakeholders to do this. Uh, to provide further detail, uh, amendment 57 provides for a one-size-fits-all view of disability, rather than recognising the diverse needs uh, within this group of people. I'll take Mr Simpson, convener. I appreciate that very much. Um, I just uh, uh, wonder if you can confirm that um, if these are left to regulations, that the affirmative procedure would be used for, for those regulations. Uh, indeed, convener. Um, that uh -huh. is uh, the case. Um, the affirmative procedure uh, will be used. Um, not everyone with a, a physical or mental impairment requires additional heating. Uh, for longer hours in the home. Uh, Amendment 58 uh, would see the enhanced heating regime applied to all of those of pensionable age. However, folks are living longer and healthier lives uh, and working longer too. Uh, becoming a pensioner does not automatically imply vulnerability to the cold and a need for higher household temperatures for longer hours. The independent academic panel, uh, which reviewed our fuel poverty definition in 2017, agreed with this assessment, as did you, the committee, uh, in your stage one report. Uh, Amendment 59 is related to households with a child under five needing higher temperatures for longer hours. There is no, no medical evidence to convince us that this is the case. In fact, higher temperatures for longer hours is inconsistent with established NHS guidance. The regulation making powers in section 2.4 of the bill provide us with the flexibility to review definitions and criteria if any evidence in the future deems that to be necessary. The resulting regulations uh, would be subject, as I've said and confirmed to Mr Simpson, to the affirmative procedure and therefore scrutinised fully uh, by the Parliament. That is another reason why this is better placed in secondary legislation. Uh, let me now turn to amendments 96 and 97, uh, which would alter section 11 of the bill. 
Uh, they oblige ministers when making regulations which establish those that are eligible for en enhanced heating to consult relevant health bodies and the patients of such bodies. Section 11.2 of the Bill uh, already provides that ministers must consult such persons as they consider appropriate, and I have already asked the Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel to examine this. And, of course, as part of the consultation process, uh, we will also involve experts. If we are required to consult relevant health bodies and their patients, this could cover almost any NHS patient rather than just those with conditions that make them vul vulnerable to the cold, so that they need higher heating temperatures for longer hours in their homes. I therefore do not support any of the amendments in this group, uh, and I would ask the committee to vote against them. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Minister. Jackie Bailey. I think we would all agree that there are some groups that need to heat their homes more and for longer. I think we would all equally agree that there is an additional cost to this and that should be accurately captured if we are to tackle fuel poverty. Um, I think, again, we would all agree that the groups identified um, by a range of organisations are indeed the right ones. The question before the committee is whether this is on the face of the bill. The politics of this is if you believe it's important, then you should put it on the face of a bill. Why run the risk of letting people slip through the net? And let me just be perfectly candid. Whether it's affirmative procedure, negative procedure, or indeed super affirmative procedure that I'm happy to explain at length to the committee, that doesn't give comfort to somebody who's having to choose between heating and eating. I would therefore ask the committee to definitely support the whole range of amendments before you. Thank you very much, Jackie, uh, and I'm sure we all appreciate your offer of a uh, lesson about superaffirmative procedure. Uh, <laughs> would you like to press or withdraw your amendment? Press, convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 57? One. Those opposed? Six. Uh, amendment 57 falls. I call Amendment 58 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 58? One. Those opposed? Six. Amendment 58 falls. I call Amendment 59 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Move, convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 59? One. Those opposed to Amendment 59? Six. Amendment 59 falls. I call Amendment 60 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moves, convener. The question is that Amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Those in favour of Amendment 60? One. Those opposed? Six. Amendment 60 falls. Thank you. I now call Amendment 20 in the name of the Minister, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. Minister, to move Amendment 20 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, convener, I'm committed to tackling fuel poverty wherever it occurs uh, and ensuring that our remote and island areas are properly represented within the new definition of fuel poverty. Uh, these amendments will establish a remote rural, remote small town and island minimum income standard uplift, and I believe they will improve the bill as well as respond to the clear recommendation of the committee and the views of stakeholders. Uh, I'm determined that we develop this using appropriate research uh, that will ensure the new definition reflects the reality of costs associated with living in remote and island communities. Uh, the regulations that are provided for by my amendments uh, will be subject, subject to the affirmative procedure to allow for a high level of scrutiny by the Parliament. Uh, this regulation-making power will be used to appoint someone to carry out the research and to make a determination in line with the methodology discussed with the committee and covering categories four and six of the urban rural classification. I will ensure that a key criteria for selecting the research organisation will be their level of experience and expertise in conducting this type of research. 
Identifying the organisation to undertake the necessary research will require a procurement process. Therefore, uh, we cannot specify an organisation in primary legislation without overriding existing pr procurement law and practice. I am clear that this uplift must always and explicitly include island communities, uh, reflecting the unique challenges these specific communities face around uh, higher cost of living. Uh, I am therefore happy to support the amendments brought forward by Liam MacArthur uh, that will provide for a separate uplift uh, for island communities. Uh, Mr MacArthur uh, has been a strong advocate for his constituency uh, and in this bill uh, he has constructively engaged with me uh, and I thank him very much for that. I therefore urge members to vote for all of the amendments in this group. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Minister. Be can I welcome to the committee Claudia Beamish, Alistair Burnett and Liam MacArthur and ask Liam MacArthur to now speak to Amendment 21A and other amendments in the group. Thanks very much, uh, Kavina. Before I, I do so, can I put on record my thanks to uh, the committee for the work done uh, in getting to this stage, getting to the point where the bill I think better reflects uh, the particular circumstances of fuel poverty in remote rural uh, and island areas and also reciprocate uh, the thanks to the Minister for his engagement on, on this issue over many months dating back um, to the time when I was raising concerns in the context of Parliament's scrutiny of the, of the Islands uh, Act. Um, clearly, there are few communities in Scotland that are unaffected by fuel poverty, but all the evidence shows that remote rural and island communities are impacted disproportionately. This was borne out by the work uh, of the government's rural fuel poverty, uh, rural fuel poverty task force, uh, ably chaired by Di Alexander, whose evidence, I think, to this committee uh, clearly pr proved persuasive, not just to members of this committee, but um, I'm pleased to note with the minister uh, as well. So I welcome the amendments from the minister in this section, which go a long way to addressing the calls for a separate minimum income standard for remote rural and island areas reflecting the additional costs borne, as the Minister said, uh, by those living in those com communities. Uh, as I said at stage one, this is an approach supported universally by the councils, housing associations and fuel poverty groups uh, across the Highlands and Islands and beyond. However, further small but important ch changes are still needed uh, if this bill is to be fully island proofed. My amendments 21A, 21B uh, achieve this by distinguishing between mainland, remote, rural and island communities. Uh, there were concerns that making such a distinction would result in additional cost and complexity. Uh, we now know from Professor Hirsch, from Spice and indeed from the government uh, that that is not the case in either respect. Those reassurances, I think, are very welcome and allow us uh, to proceed with confidence that these changes will, will enable the targeting of resources at those most in need, the specific circumstances of remote, rural and island communities to be taken into account, and that this can be achieved without diverting resources away uh, from the front line. So again, I thank the Minister uh, and the Committee uh, for their support in getting to this stage, uh, but in particular Di Alexander and the other experts uh, working in this field who have over many months uh, made the case, uh, the case patiently, consistently and I'm pleased to say successfully uh, and therefore we'll be moving my amendment 21A in due course. Thank you. Thank you much, Liam. Would anybody else like to contribute? Graham? Yeah. Thanks, um, yeah, I'll be supporting uh, all the amendments in this group. Um, I think they uh, reflect very well the, the work the committee did at stage one on this. Um, I'd like to thank the, the, the minister for listening to the concerns that were raised and the evidence that we took uh, on this. Uh, I can also uh, thank Liam MacArthur for bringing forward his very useful amendments to uh, Island Proof, the M MIS. Um, so I think um, at, at the end of the day, this is an example of how uh, a bill can be uh, much improved through the work of uh, this, this committee in particular, um, and uh, we'll, we'll end up um, uh, helping people who live in remote rural areas and islands. And much, Minister, would you like to wind up? Uh, very briefly, um, I'd like to thank the committee for the efforts that they have made in this area. Um, I too uh, would uh, pay tribute to Di Alexander for the work that he has put in over many a year. Um, uh, Di, as many of you know, um, is rather vociferous at points and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, Equally, I'd, I'd like to pay tribute to a, a number of the MSPs, uh, including Mr MacArthur, who have uh, obviously 
put their uh, islands at the heart of all of this. Uh, I know that Mr Gibson uh, has been uh, again uh, at the forefront and Alistair Allen uh, has also uh, been speaking to me uh, around about this. Obviously, uh, passing these amendments uh, are very, very important. Uh, the committee can be assured uh, that my officials and I will continue to listen uh, to the voices of island communities and remote commu communities uh, as we move forward. Thank you very much, Convener. Thank you very much, Minister. The question is that Amendment 20 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 20 is therefore agreed to. I call Amendment 61 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 99. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Those in favour of Amendment 61? One. Those opposed to Amendment 61? Six. Amendment 61 is not agreed to. I call Amendment 21 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 20. Minister to move formally. Uh, moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 21A in the name of Liam MacArthur, already debated with Amendment 20. Liam MacArthur to move or not move? Mm. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 21A be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. 21A is therefore agreed to. Call Amendment 21B in the name of Liam MacArthur, already debated with Amendment 20. Liam MacArthur to move or not move? Moved. The question is that 21, Amendment 21B be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 21B is agreed to. Uh, I ask the Minister to press or withdraw Amendment 21 as amended. Uh, press, Convener. The question is that Amendment 21 as amended be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call Amendment 100 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 99. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 100 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 100 is agreed to. I call Amendment 63 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 99. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 63 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Those in favour of Amendment 63? One. Those opposed to Amendment 63? Six. Amendment 63 is therefore not agreed to. I call Amendment 22 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 20. Minister, to move formally. Uh, moved. The question is that Amendment 22 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call, uh, the, uh, the Amendment 22 is agreed to. I call Amendment 23 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 20. Minister? Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 23 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 23 is agreed to. I call Amendment 64 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Jackie Bailey to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Yes. Those in favour of Amendment 64? One. Those opposed to Amendment 64? <coughs> Six. Amendment 64 is therefore not agreed to. The question now is that Section 2 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. yes. Question, uh, section 2 is therefore agreed to. I call Amendment 24 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 15. Minister, to move formally. Uh, moved, Convener. Question is that Amendment 24 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 25 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 15. Minister. Uh, moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 25 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, amendment 25 is now agreed to. I call Amendment 101 in the name of Jackie Bailey, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. <coughs> Jackie Bailey to move Amendment 101 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you very much, Convener. I will be very br brief and I'm pleased to move um, my final amendment for the day, which is Amendment 101. Um, in a previous incarnation, this was Amendment 65, um, but helpfully in the intervening week that the committee um, was not meeting, I had a very brief discussion with the government um, and chose to withdraw the amendment and substitute it with 101. The purpose of the amendment is straightforward. It requires the Scottish Government to prepare its fuel poverty strategy with key groups, those with lived experience of fuel poverty, disabled people, older people, those in rural areas, all areas I think the committee would agree on. Um, consultation can be very passive. I know that isn't the Scottish Government's intention, and the Government rightly embraces co-production, but there is no legal definition I could find for co-production that would, would be suitable for the face of the bill. So my original wording was cooperation, but apparently 
According to the government legal advisers, this inferred a degree of compulsion. Um, so I've settled on involvement and hope that the Scottish Government and the Committee can agree that this is an appropriate form of wording. It's supported by a wide range of organisations, Convener, Poverty Alliance, Citizens Advice Scotland, Commonweal, Inclusion Scotland and the Health and Social Care Alliance, just to name but a few. Thank you, Convener. Thank you very much, sir. Minister, to speak to Amendment 31 and other amendments in the group. Uh, convener, there are several amendments in, the, in this group from me and three other colleagues, so I hope uh, that you'll forgive me, but I, I will take some time to, to go over each set. Uh, let me first discuss my own amendments before those of others uh, in the grouping. Uh, the bill currently provides that in preparing the strategy and our periodic reports, uh, ministers must consult such people as they consider appropriate, including those with lived experience of fuel poverty. Uh, amendments 31 and 36 extend that to ensure it includes the local authority partners uh, that help us deliver support. Uh, Amendment 32 commits us to laying a report before Parliament on the consultation process for the preparation of the strategy. Uh, this report must state how consultees' views have been taken into account and requires ministers to make a parliamentary statement uh, on the strategy. Uh, these amendments further strengthen the bill uh, and, uh, and, and who we are required to consult, uh, as well as ensuring that Parliament can hold the government to account. Uh, let me now turn to the others in this group. Alec Rowley's uh, Amendment 87 stipulates four categories of folks we need to consult when preparing periodic reports. Uh, I fully expect these categories to be the ones we would consult anyway, uh, so I don't have any problem with the consultation duty being extended to guarantee this, uh, and therefore I'm happy to support Mr Rowley's amendment. In contrast, uh, I have a difficulty with the way that Jackie Bailey's Amendment 101 is framed. Uh, I have no objection to obliging ministers when preparing the strategy uh, to consult the type of folk that Jackie Bailey wants to have involved in the preparation of the strategy, just as Mr Rowley has done uh, for periodic reports. However, this amendment places an obligation on ministers under Section 3 of the Bill to prepare the strategy with the involvement of the folk listed in the amendment, but as the strategy already has to be prepared in consultation with people under Section 4, uh, this will result in duplication. In addition, uh, when it comes to the wording of what ministers are obliged to do here, uh, my legal team tell me that it's better to use the word consult uh, than to use the word involve. That's because it's clearer from a legal perspective as to what the duty to consult individuals in the preparation of the strategy means, as opposed to the duty to involve them uh, in the preparation of it. Also, for legal reasons, it would be important for the amendment to be subject to wording uh, which makes clear how those to be consulted are selected. Otherwise, the validity of the strategy could be attacked for not including everyone in the country that falls into one of these categories. That, of course, convener would be a lot of people. I, I want to stress, however, that I am sympathetic uh, to what Jackie Bailey is trying to achieve. Uh, therefore, I would like to suggest a solution. Uh, I'm happy to bring forward uh, an amendment at stage three, uh, which will achieve Jackie Bailey's objectives, but in a more considered way, uh, and replicate that of Mr Rowley's amendment for peri periodic reporting uh, for the fuel poverty strategy. This would align the bill to ensure that we consult uh, those categories of people, both Mr Rowley and Ms uh, Bailey at list, uh, and will place this within the relevant section of the bill. I therefore ask the committee to support Amendment 87 and vote against Amendment 101. Uh, let me now turn to uh, Graham Simpson's amendments 102, 103 and 104, uh, which he will speak to more. But just to say that these will mean before ministers can complete the strategy or any revision of it, Parliament will get the opportunity to scrutinise for a reasonable period what is being proposed. Uh, this is in line with the procedure adopted for the Islands Plan. Uh, Mr Simpson's previous amendment was more onerous, so I'm glad that uh, we've been able to discuss what he was trying to achieve uh, and come to a, a consensus, I hope. And I hope that the committee uh, will support these three amendments. Thank you, Convener. Thank you very much. Uh, Graham Simpson to speak to Amendment 102 and other amendments in the group. Yeah. 
Thanks, Convener. Um, well, as, as the Minister said, um, I did have a, a, an amendment which I withdrew. That was Amendment 8, um, uh, laid with the best of intentions uh, and similar to one that was laid uh, during the process of the planning bill, uh, and it relates to the parliamentary scrutiny um, of the draft strategy. Um, uh, however, it was pointed out to me that um, despite all those good intentions, um, if the amendment went through uh, uh, as it was worded, it, it could take uh, a full year for the draft strategy to get through, and that clearly wasn't my intention. So uh, being the practical man that I am, convener, um, I withdrew it uh, and have come back with an alternative which is slightly less onerous, but would still allow Parliament to scrutinise the draft strategy, uh, which I hope we all feel is, is, is very important. Uh, so that explains um, amendments 102, 103 and 104. Um, if I can turn to uh, some of the other uh, amendments in the group, uh, Amendment 87 from Alex Rowley, um, we will be supporting. I think that's a, a, a measured amendment, uh, which is what you'd expect from Mr Rowley, of course. Um, uh, sadly, uh, uh, we I cannot um, accept uh, Amendment 101 from Jackie Bailey, although I do see uh, the intentions behind it, but I would uh, urge her, if it is rejected, to uh, perhaps come back at Stage 3 uh, with it slightly reworded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alec Rowley to speak to Amendment 87 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, Convener. The pe periodic report must reflect people's lived experiences of fuel poverty, it seems to me. In particular, it's important that the government does speak to the most vulnerable groups as identified within uh, this amendment. Uh, to do so is to understand how they are being impacted by the government's strategy, what support is reaching them, um, and indeed what support is not. So I welcome the fact that the Minister has indicated that they would equally support that. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else want to contribute? Well, in that case, uh, Jackie Bailey to wind up and press her with Rob. Um, thank you, Convener. I won't add to what I've already said, um, but in recognition of the Minister's position, can I indicate that I will not move Amendment 101 um, if the Minister gives a commitment that he's happy to work with me and I will bring back, as suggested by Graham Simpson, an amendment at Stage 3. More than happy to do that. Convener. Thank you very much. Uh, Jackie Bailey wishes to withdraw her amendment. Does any member present object to that amendment being withdrawn? OK, that amendment is therefore withdrawn. I call Amendment 26 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. The Minister to move formally. Uh, moved, Convener. Uh, I'd like to point out that if Amendment 26 is agreed to, you cannot call Amendment 66 due to preemption. The question is that Amendment 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Okay, the amendment is agreed. Um, the question. I call Amendment 7 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Um, I'll not be moving that convener because it relates to the 2032 target. OK, thank you. I call Amendment 45 and... Sorry, OK. Yeah, I call Amendment 6 in the name of Graeme Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graeme Simpson to move or not move? Moved. Thank you. My apologies, Graeme. The question is that Amendment 6 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. No. Right, OK. Those in favour of Amendment 6? Five. Those opposed to Amendment 6? One. Uh, amendment 6 is agreed to. I now call Amendment 45 in the name of Pauline McNeill, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings. I remind members that under Rule 9.12.6c, the presiding officer has determined that the costs associated with Amendment 48 would in themselves be significant. Therefore, Amendment 48 may be debated, but the question on it may not be put in the absence of a financial resolution. And Alec Rowley has agreed to move Amendment 45 and speak to all amendments in the group on behalf of Pauline McNeill. Hey, thank you, Convener. I move the amendments uh, in Pauline McNeill's name, uh, as well as speaking to Amendment 60. Eight and, and my own name. As part of the strategy, ministers must lay out how they will identify households in fuel poverty 
I think that, that that's crucial. The new definition of fuel poverty is welcome, but is highly complex, and the government must consider how it will translate into direct support for those living in fuel poverty. Ministers setting out how they plan to identify households in fuel poverty is a crucial part of this process, and it would be useful for the Parliament, the third sector and any other interested parties to understand how they will do this. Uh, so happy to move these amendments. Thank you very much. Uh, Andy Wyman to speak to Amendment 46 and other amendments in the group. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Convener. Uh, Amendment 46 uh, is designed to try uh, and establish the um, quantum of buildings require, uh, buildings um, out there that um, have low levels of energy efficiency um, and require improvements by the target date. Um, however, I will not be pressing this uh, amendment. It contains the wrong date, and Alexander Burnett's Amendment 47 expresses my intentions uh, more accurately. Alexander Burnett to speak to Amendment 47 and other amendments in the group. Uh, thank you, convener, and can I thank the committee for their work to date and, and note members to my register of interest regarding construction and property management. Uh, my amendments are aimed at progressing the route for residential buildings across Scotland to achieve an EPC rating of C or better, and to give us some context, the Scottish Government currently have a target of 2040, uh, but on the 10th of May last year, this Parliament passed a motion with cross-party support, approving that date to 2030. Uh, the motion detailing that this Parliament supports the Scottish Government to have a target for all homes reaching EPC C rating where feasibly possible should be no later than 2030, not 2040, given the urgency to reduce carbon emissions and to ensure that every home in Scotland is warm and properly insulated. Uh, just last week, the Scottish Government launched the Energy Efficiency Scotland consultation on further development of a programme proposing some properties to reach EPC band by C by 2025. Uh, so it would appear that the enthusiasm for improving energy efficiency in homes is gathering momentum and that's to be welcomed. Uh, however, to achieve this not only requires the physical improvements to buildings, but first requires preparatory steps, namely the identification of the work. Uh, my amendments merely seek to put into legislation this preparatory work and the steps necessary to achieve the targets set out by the government and improved on by the parliament. Uh, the first step is a strategy of how we identify these buildings, and this is the aim of Amendment 47, and I'm grateful for previous indications, including that of the Scottish Government, of their support. Uh, the second step is the actual identification of the residential buildings and the work required, and this is covered by Amendment 48, and I appreciate that this cannot be put due to the absence of a financial resolution. Uh, Amendment 48 simply builds on Amendment 47 by not just setting out the approach to identifying relevant buildings, but actually identifying them. Sorry, yes. Thank I agree to, to the member. Uh, I note what the member says about his Amendment 48, that it can't be put because there is no financial resolution. What then is the financial implication of Amendment 48 in that regard, just for the record, because that information is not available to people who are currently watching? Uh, it's, it's, it's covered in a second. So the presiding officer uh, uh, put an estimate of £60 million, uh, on the work. Uh, uh, an indication from the government uh, uh, put it... Uh, between 58 and 116, but I'll come to that in a second. Uh, so, uh, therefore, I did not remove Amendment 48, as I believe it is important to debate the second step and get the Minister on the record as to how he sees the targets being achieved, either through this bill or elsewhere. Uh, the presiding officer has put a cost of 60 million on this work, but correspondence from the Minister's office suggests that the actual estimate to be anywhere between 58 million and 116 million. The correspondence also highlighted other issues over the identification process. Now, both points, whether on cost or process, are ones which will need to be addressed, and the sooner the better. However, in a slightly odd request, given that Amendment 48 can't be put, I was urged to withdraw the amendment so that it wouldn't be debated. On many levels, this seems wrong, and I'd appreciate the Minister's explanation of this reluctance uh, and why his support for one amendment is contingent on another that can't be put uh, being withdrawn. Now, the only way to achieve an EPC band of C or higher in all residential homes where technically feasible is by spending money. And Amendment 48 would have accelerated the process of doing this by putting a binding agreement onto the Scottish Government to identify what work is needed. So should support for this amendment be expressed by members, uh, I would hope that the Minister listens and amends the financial memorandum in time for the next stage to permit a financial resolution that actually delivers for energy efficient housing. Uh, 
<coughs> on a final explanatory point, uh, I note members to the final part of the amendments which detail that the requirement to achieve an EPC rating of C or higher will only be enforced where it is technically feasible and cost effective. The reason for this is that we are very much aware that in some particular rural areas and on the islands, achieving an EPC rating of C or above may not be achievable in a cost effective manner. In conclusion, to effectively reduce fuel poverty, we must take action and this amendment will help take steps in making some progress in our shared goal to reduce fuel poverty for all across Scotland. By identifying resi residential homes who are living in lower energy efficient homes, we can take a step forward in reducing bills, carbon emissions and ensuring residents are living in warmer homes. As noted previously, I understand Amendment 48 cannot be put to a vote, but I'd be grateful if members express their views if they would have supported it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr Burnett. Claudia Beamish to speak to Amendment 72 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, Kavina. Good morning to the committee and to the Minister. My Amendment 72 looks to ensure the issue how to remove low levels of energy efficiency, which is, of course, a driver of fuel poverty, in relation to housing in multiple occupation, is considered by Ministers in the preparation of the fuel poverty strategy. This will also aid reducing carbon emissions. This amendment has been framed in the most straightforward way possible, though it relates to a complex issue. There are many buildings in Scotland that fall into the category of housing in multiple occupant, occupation. It can be very challenging to deal with the low levels of energy efficiency in these circumstances. This is, of course, due in part to the difficulties experienced in relation to the areas of common responsibility, which could be stairwells or roofing. The complexity of proceeding with energy efficiency actions can be due to a number of reasons, which can include failure to identify ownership of one of the occupants, lack of interest uh, by an occupant or refusal to get involved by an occupant. Uh, these challenges should not be allowed to become unsurmountable for such a serious issue. The issue can be particularly difficult, as I'm sure will be recognised by the committee, for several categories of home dwellers. These include tenants living in the broad category of private rented accommodation and students living in rented accommodation. I'm clear that landlords have a responsibility to ensure that the accommodation they rent reaches a livable standard in relation to energy efficiency. Housing is a UN right, and here in Scotland that surely means the right to a warm home. I tried to bring this issue forward through amendments at this stage, um, uh, to the, the and, and, and at stage three of the Housing Act. I'm, I'm stuttering because it was actually in 2014. It seems a long time ago. Um, at that time, I tried to create a uh, duty to make the provision for energy efficiency standards through the re repairing standard in section 22 of the Act. This was a much more detailed approach. In 2014, it was argued by the Minister that the Scottish Government had put together a ministerial working group, which indeed they had, to look at energy efficiency standards in the whole of the private uh, sector, and this work was likely to report back that autumn. I was encouraged not to move my amendment at that time, as the issue would be explored by the Ministerial Working Group. It is, though, disappointing that five years on, um, this has not been tackled, and I believe this is an opportunity to do so. This amend um, amendment is a probing amendment at this stage, and I hope in uh, the view of the challenges faced by many people living in multi-occupancy buildings that the Minister uh, will consider discussions with me and others who are interested in this serious fuel poverty issue in order to find a way to tackle it. Um, and, convener, I'd now like to move to my amendment um, uh, 73, uh, which ensures that in preparing the fuel poverty strategy, ministers must consider how rural cooperatives and community bodies can be supported to identify sustainable energy solutions. Rural fuel poverty can pre pre present a very serious ch challenge to comfortable living. The 2017 latest statistics for the Scottish Housing Condition Survey show that while f urban fuel poverty lay at 21%, uh, which I'm sure the committee is aware of these figures, but for the record, rural fuel poverty was at a staggering 43%. Sadly, I doubt that the next set of figures will have altered significantly. There are particular and specific challenges faced by homeowners and tenants living in off-grid circumstances. There are also challenges which are created by distance from the advice that would be available, if not for remoteness. The identification of the available skilled companies in remote areas can also present difficulties where advice would be valuable. The essence of this amendment would bring targeted support for collective action 
to tackle challenges faced. Solutions could be to arrange for a group of houses and possibly nearby workshops to have energy efficiency issues such as insulation tackled at the same time, and this could well bring down costs. In a village, town or city, there are often opportunities for area-based action. However, in rural areas, this is often not possible due to the points above and also to the issues of scale. I know several estates in my region of South Scotland that have successfully introduced sustainable energy solutions, such as a biomass boiler at Douglas and Angus Estates in Douglas uh, Village and also Dumfries House. But they have the financial capacity to, to deal with these challenges in a way that uh, often community groups can't and those that might form a cooperative for action uh, in a small hamlet or remote area. The challenges are indeed manifold, as described above, and could compa be compound compounded by the cost issues. So support on this should also be considered. Amen these, um, amen this amendment is again a probing amendment uh, to provoke further discussion on the challenges for remote rural fuel poverty and some possible actions to support change th within the strategy. I hope it will be possible to discuss these issues further with the Minister and others who are interested at, um, in advance of stage three. And the consequential amendment, which is um, 98, uh, consequential to 73, states that making the definitions required in amend Amendment 73 will be necessary. These are rural areas, rural cooperatives and sustainable energy solutions. Um, and this should be done by negative procedure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any other contributions? Yeah. Um, very briefly, convener, if I can just comment on Alexander Burnett's um, amendments 47 and 48. Um, uh, 47. Well, for, I think to, from, from the outset, I think we'd all agree, because we've spoken about it often enough in this committee, um, that uh, we, we do need to improve the energy performance of homes across Scotland, and, and that uh, clearly relates to fuel poverty. So I think uh, Mr Burnett's uh, Amendment 47 um, is, uh, should be supported. Uh, it merely uh, gets the government to set out um, how, they, how they plan to identify buildings with low levels of energy efficiency. Um, and I think that's the right thing to do. Um, because if we don't do that, then uh, we're not going to be able to improve matters. Um, however, um, his amendment um, 48 goes, goes a little bit further because it then uh, uh, compels the government to go ahead and identify those buildings. So that to clearly to do that involves uh, would involve a lot of work. Hence the astronomic figures uh, attached to this amendment uh, and hence why it can't, it can't be voted on. Um, but were it to be voted on, uh, were we allowed to vote on it, I would, uh, of course, support it because, um, you know, we need to do both. But as things stand, convener, I'll be supporting Amendment 47. Thank you very much. Annabel? Yes, just briefly. So uh, on that point, on Amendment 48, which would cost in the region of 60 million plus, um, I, I, aside from that, and it's not clear where that money would come from. Maybe Mr Burnett could propose how he wishes to fund that. But I, I, I'm not aware that we actually have powers to uh, require entry to private dwelling homes. Is that a point that Mr Burnett has considered? Uh, if oh, I'm terribly sorry. Can yes, you, you can't ask questions. I can't ask him questions. Well, I just leave the question open. Yes. Uh, I don't think that this Parliament as things stand, has the powers to require entry into private dwelling houses. Okay. Thank you, Convener. Right, thank you very much. Uh, Minister? Um, thank you very much, Convener. There are a number of issues uh, to cover with this grouping. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'll discuss amendments 46, 47 and 48, um, dealing uh, with the EPC ratings first. Uh, under Amendment 48, uh, in the name of Alexander Burnett, uh, the fuel poverty strategy would be required to include information uh, on the energy efficiency level of the estimated 96 six 
967,000, sorry, convener private sector residential properties uh, without uh, an existing EPC. Uh, and Ms Ewing is quite right to highlight some of the difficulties uh, that there would be in, in doing some of that. Um, at between £60 uh, and £121 per home, uh, this would cost a, a minimum uh, £58 million, up to £116 million, uh, which is why it's not being voted on today. Uh, it would be far beyond the objective of this bill uh, to require the Scottish Government to meet this additional expense, and such funds would always, uh, in my opinion, be better spent on frontline delivery. Uh, EPC certificates are already required for new homes, uh, those homes with new building warrant applications and homes that were sold or rented uh, to a new tenant since 2009. So over time, uh, there will be a constant increase in this information. Um, it has always been my intention uh, that the fuel poverty strategy would address energy efficiency as a driver of fuel poverty. Ultimately, uh, we're working towards the uh, elimination of energy efficiency as a driver of fuel poverty in the long term. Um, I note that Mr uh, Whiteman intends to withdraw Amendment 46, uh, so I won't go into too much detail uh, about that particular amendment. I am content to support Alexander Burnett's Amendment 47, uh, requiring the fuel poverty strategy to set out the approach to identify properties requiring improvement to EPC C uh, by 2030. Uh, I think it may be necessary at stage three uh, to be clear that this approach should target fuel, fuel poor households, uh, but I support it as it provides a commitment uh, to do all that we can to establish a clear way forward. Uh, in relation to Claudia Beamish's amendments 73 and 98, uh, section 3 uh, already allows for the preparation of a fuel poverty strategy and outlines what should be in included in it. Uh, and the strategy will be designed for the whole of Scotland, uh, including rural areas. Uh, the focus on rural areas in the amendment linked to defining the term sustainable energy solutions is also unhelpful. Uh, defining the term in a rural only context may actually uh, result in a separate understanding of the term at national level. Uh, in other words, this could lead to variation uh, and what might be uh, deemed a sustainable energy solution in an urban or rural area. Additionally, Section 3.3 of the Bill allows Scottish Ministers to include any other information uh, that they consider appropriate in the fuel poverty strategy. Uh, therefore, uh, should we need to include specific support in rural areas or to define which groups the support will target, uh, this can be done. Uh, for these reasons, I would urge the committee uh, to vote against Amendment 73 uh, and 98. Um, I support Pauline McNeill's Amendment 71, uh, but not Amendments 49 or Claudia Beamish's Amendment 72. Amendment 71 will allow us to highlight how we address all four drivers of fuel poverty within the strategy and is broad and flexible enough to cover all sectors, including private tenancies and HMOs, so separate amendments are not needed. Uh, for these reasons, I would ask the committee to vote against 49 and 72 and support Amendment 71. I'm also happy to support Pauline McNeill's amendments 45, 50 and 51 to ensure that the strategy and periodic reports set out clear costings and Alec Rowley's amendment 68 uh, which will ensure that the strategy explains how we intend to identify households in fuel poverty. Thank you, convener. Much, uh, Al, you want to wind up? Yeah, just briefly, <coughs> convener, uh, I, I would say that the success story, a big success story of the last decade and more has been the improvements in energy efficiency within public sector housing. 
and, and that's because there was tight regulations put in place uh, that required councils to improve the energy efficiency. So within housing associations and, and, and councils, their housing stock is of a higher, much higher rate in, in terms of energy efficiency. They've still got work to do, but they've done a tremendous amount of work. That's why if the Minister is serious about the elimination in the long term of energy efficiency, poor energy efficiency is a driver if you poverty, then this is an area that, that has to see real work done and hopefully we'll see that coming through both in terms of the strategy and the financial memorandum. Okay. That will be moving. Thank you very much. And uh, are you going to press it? Press. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 45 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? 45, Amendment 45 is agreed to. I call Amendment 27 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, to move formally. Uh, moved, Convener. And I point out that if Amendment 27 is agreed to, you cannot call Amendment 67 due to preemption. Uh, the question is that Amendment 27 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Okay. I call Amendment 68 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 45. Alec Rowley, to move or not move? Uh, move. The question is that Amendment 68 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 68 is agreed to. Call Amendment 46 in the name of Andy Whiteman, already debated with Amendment 45. Andy Whiteman is officially... Not moved. Thank you. Uh, I call Amendment 47 in the name of Alexander Burnett, already debated with Amendment 45. Alexander Burnett to move or not move? Uh, moved. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 47 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 47 is agreed to. The question Amendment 48 cannot be put in the absence of the financial resolution. And I call Amendment 29 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, to move formally. I moved, Convener. And I'll point out again, if Amendment 29 is agreed to, cannot call Amendment 69. The question is that Amendment 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 29 is agreed to. The question is that section 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? That's a mistake. That's a mistake, so be quiet. Okay. <laughs> no, it should never sit beside the teacher. By the way, the mistake's not mine. I'm delighted to say. Uh, I call Amendment 30 in the name of the Minister already debated with Amendment 17. Minister to move formally. Thank you. Uh, and I point out that if Amendment 30 is agreed to, Amendment 70 cannot be called. Uh, okay. The question is that Amendment 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, to, to the question is that Amendment 71 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Okay. okay. I call Amendment 72 in the name of Claudia Beamish, already debated with Amendment 45. Claudia Beamish to move or not move? Not move. Thank you. I call Amendment 49 in the name of Pauline McNeill, already debated with Amendment 45. Pauline McNeill to move or not move? Not move. Thank you. I call Amendment 73 in the name of Claudia Beamish, already debated with Amendment 45. Claudia Beamish to move or not move? Not move. Thank you, Claudia. I call, I call Amendment 74 in the name of Alec Rowley, grouped with Amendment 75, 76 and 83. Alec Rowley to move Amendment 74 and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, thank you, Convener. This, this amendment aims that Ministers must keep the strategy under review and either publish a new strategy or state why uh, they have not every five years. Uh, it seems inaccessible for the Government uh, to only have to publish one strategy over such a long period of time particularly when we have interim targets and periodic reports that could suggest the need that that strategy be reviewed, be amended, be updated. Uh, this amendment does not require ministers to publish a new strategy if they believe it is not needed to do so, but the option uh, must be considered, and that's, that's the important point. And and considering and not deciding, then they publish an explanation as to why they have not revised the strategy. Uh, Andy White. Uh, thank you, Convener. Yes, I was supporting Alec Crowley's Amendment 74. Um, when it was lodged, um, I was rather surprised to uh, discover that, in fact, we hadn't 
made any recommendations around this in our stage one report, which I think was a, a, a bit of an oversight, uh, given that the fuel poverty target is 2040. So I'm very glad that Alex Rowley's eagle eyes spotted this and um, uh, has dealt with it, because I think it's very appropriate, given that we, the argument for having 2040 as a target is that things will change. Well, things change, obviously, a strategy might uh, need to change as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other members wish to comment? In that case, Minister. Uh, thank you, Convener. Uh, the development of the fuel poverty strategy is of vital importance. It is what will help deliver real change to our communities across Scotland and improve people's lives. Uh, the fuel poverty strategy should work for people wherever they live uh, and help bring people out of fuel poverty, tackling all four drivers of fuel poverty, income, energy prices, energy efficiency and energy use. Uh, I therefore support Alec Rowley's amendments 74, 75, 76 and 83. Uh, these are sensible ways of ensuring that the fuel poverty strategy uh, can be revised and remain effective, uh, particularly in the event of the target date being altered as envisaged by his Amendment 54, if the Fuel Poverty Advisory Panel feels that the target can be reached sooner rather than later. Uh, were this to be the case, the ability to revise the stra strategy to take account of this uh, would, of course, be key. Uh, these amendments uh, may need to be slightly uh, revised at stage three uh, to ensure that they work as everyone would want them to, uh, but these would be technical amendments only and keep to the principle of what Alex Rowley is proposing here, particularly in light of his arguments last week. Uh, I therefore support the addition of these amendments. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, you like to press or withdraw? Press, please. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 74 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 74 is agreed to. The question is that Section 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We got that one right. Uh, I call Amendment 75 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 74. Alec Rowley, to move or not yes. move? Please. The question is that Amendment 75 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, 75 is agreed to. I call Amendment 31 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 101. Minister, to move forward. Moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is Amendment 31 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 31 is agreed to. I call Amendment 102 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 101. Graham Simpson, to move or not move? Move. The question is Amendment 102 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, question, uh, amendment 102 is agreed to. The question is that section 4 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call amendment 103 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with amendment 101. Graham Simpson, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment 103 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 103 is agreed to. I call amendment 76 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with amendment 74. Alec Rowley, to move or not move? Yeah, move, Camina. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 76 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 76 is agreed to. <coughs> I call Amendment 32 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 101. Minister, to move forward. Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? I call Amendment 104 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 101. Graham Simpson, to move or not move? Move. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 104 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 104 is agreed to. The question, therefore, is that Section 5 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Section 5 is agreed to. I call Amendment 33 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, to move formally. Moved, Convener. I point out if Amendment 33 is agreed to. I cannot call Amendment 77. The question is that Amendment 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, amendment 33 is agreed to. The question is... That uh, call amendment A10 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with amendment 5. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Not move. Thank you. I call amendment 9 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with amendment 5. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Move. The question is that amendment 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Okay. Those in favour of amendment 9? 5. Those opposed to amendment 9? 1. 1 abstention. Uh, amendment 9 is agreed to. 
I call Amendment 50 in the name of Pauline McNeill, already debated with Amendment 45. I'll get Rowley to move on. Yeah, okay. The question is, Amendment 50 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yeah. Amendment 50 is agreed to. I call Amendment 34 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister to move Moved forward. Moved, Thank you. Point out that if Amendment 34 is agreed to, I cannot call Amendment 78. The question is that Amendment 34 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The Amendment 34 is agreed to. I call Amendment 12 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Not move. Thank you. I call Amendment 11 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graham Simpson, move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. No, sorry, we are not all agreed. Uh, my apologies, Andy. Uh, those in favour of Amendment 11? Five. Those opposed? One. And one abstention? Thank you. I call Amendment 51 in the name of Pauline McNeill, already debated with Amendment 45. Pauline McNeill to move or not move? Sorry, Andy. Alec. Yeah, move. Fred, Frank. Uh, the question is that Amendment 51 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 51 is agreed to. I call Amendment 35 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister to move forward. Moved, Convener. Point out that if Amendment 35 is agreed to, cannot call Amendment 79. The question is that Amendment 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 35 is agreed to. I call Amendment 14 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Not move. The question, I call Amendment 13 in the name of Graham Simpson, already debated with Amendment 5. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. No? Okay. Those in favour of Amendment 13? Six. Those opposed? One. Amendment 13 is agreed to. I call Amendment 80 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 53. Alec Rowley to move or not move? And not move. Thank you. Uh, I think at this time we will have a short comfort break and come back in five minutes and suspend the meeting.
I call Amendment 81 in the name of Annabel Ewing, grouped with Amendments 82, 84 and 85. At this point, I would advise members that eight, Amendments 81 and 82 and 84 and 85 are direct alternatives. For the record, direct alternatives are two or more amendments seeking to replace the same text in a bill with alternative approaches. In the case of this group, there are two such alternatives, taking Amendments 81 and 82, for example, a vote will be taken on both amendments in the order in which they appear in the marshalled list. If both 81 and 82 were to be agreed to, the, to then the second amendment, 82, succeeds the former, and the first amendment, 81, would cease to have effect. After that explanation, Annabel Ewing, to move amendment 81 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you, convener. Uh, so, yes, I would like to move amendments 81 and 84 in my name. This deals with the issue of the frequency of reporting. Uh, that we uh, looked at uh, in our stage one evidence. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to state at the outset that whilst uh, indeed we as a committee in our stage one report felt that on the balance of the evidence received at that stage, a three year reporting um, uh, period would be reasonable. In fact, of course, since that time, we have received a letter from COSLA uh, uh, dated 13th February to the committee, and perhaps I could just quote that briefly, convener. So, Cosla state, and I quote, we further note that the committee recommends increasing the frequency of statutory reporting from a five-year to a three-year basis. This will place additional requirements on local government, which, if not fully funded, has the potential to take resources away from frontline delivery. In the context of restrained, restrained budgets, a balance needs to be struck between reporting and delivery. There needs to be clarity over the time slash cost outlay of reporting requirements before any move to increase their frequency. So, convener, my amendments really are motivated by um, the concerns of COSLA, and I think its members will be aware that I have repeatedly stated uh, uh, when discussing this bill that my uh, uh, desire is to see money go to the front line and not be subsumed in other matters to the extent that it's not necessary. Uh, and I think, therefore, that the frequency, reporting frequency that I would propose in my amendments um, of four years actually does strike that balance that COSLA in particular is looking for. I don't want to cost local authorities any more money than is necessary to ensure, and it is absolutely necessary, that we do have a reporting mechanism. But I don't want to cost local authorities any more money than absolutely necessary uh, and rather ensure that money that would be saved from not having a more frequent reporting period than four years could indeed be spent on frontline uh, activities. So that inspires my amendments, convener. And I would, of course, just remind the committee uh, that <clears throat> aside from the, uh, the reporting requirement we are discussing, of course, national statistics on fuel poverty targets themselves will continue to be published year on year by Scotland's chief statistician. Uh, so there will be an ability in that context to track progress. But of course, we also wish to see this fuller uh, reporting, uh, absolutely. But my contention, my submission is that in light of causeless concerns, I think it would be appropriate to have a four-year period rather than a three-year period. Thank you, convener. Thank you very much, Annabelle. I'll like Rowley to speak to Amendment 82 and other amendments in the group. Thank you, convener. 82 and 85. Uh, which I will be moving. Well, the first point is to establish the principle that I certainly feel we, we need to uh, really be able to scrutinise the progress that is being made. And the question is what's reasonable. Many stakeholders called for an annual uh, report, uh, but and, 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 and trying to find a compromise, I believe that three years gives sufficient time for robust evidence gathering, reporting and independent scrutiny. And I really don't accept what COSLA are arguing in terms of the differences in cost between three and, and, and four years. Uh, what I do think is that there needs to be a real commitment to ensuring that we are delivering, that we are tackling fuel poverty and that a three-year time period of review would mean that if things aren't working, if things are not happening as they should be happening, then, then we can take the action that's necessary. So, um, with that, I would move. OK, thank you very much. Uh, any other members wish to? Graham? Yeah. Um, so, really, it's a, a, a balance um, between four four and three years. There's no, there's no real right answer. You just have to take a view on it. 
um, and the committee did consider this and we concluded uh, that it should be three years. Um, we did hear evidence from councils uh, on this. In fact, Glasgow City Council um, backed the three-year period. Um, there were other views. Uh, the existing Homes Alliance went for one year. Um, uh, the committee considered that would be too onerous. Um, but at the end of the day, you just have to... You, if, if you don't agree with five years, then you have to come up with something else. And my view is, um, on this occasion, I'll uh, be backing the uh, committee's recommendation, which was fully thought through. We knew the position of councils at that time. Um, so I'll be sticking to three years and supporting Alex Rowley's amendments and not supporting Annabel Ewing's. OK, thank you. Um, Minister. Uh, thank you, Convener. Uh, the amendments in this group deal with the formal statutory reporting uh, against the fuel poverty targets. Uh, it's right that these are careful, thorough, wide-ranging pieces of work, and that in their preparation, uh, they seek the views of those with direct personal experience of fuel poverty. Uh, to do that well, how, however, requires uh, an investment of time and resources from everyone. Uh, and I would ask the committee to consider carefully uh, the consequences of more frequent reporting. Uh, the bill's financial memorandum states that the cost of preparing a periodic report is around £90,000 to £100,000, and that only covers the direct costs of administrative support, uh, not the time and effort required from delivery partners, stakeholder groups and those with lived experience. So I would ask you to bear this in mind uh, when you decide on the options in front of you. Uh, in their letter to you of the 13th of February, uh, COSLA was concerned that increasing the frequency of statutory reporting from a five-year to three-year basis uh, will place additional requirements on local government uh, with the potential uh, to take resources away from frontline delivery. Uh, I too have this concern. Uh, likewise, I share COSLA's concern that in the context of restrained budgets, uh, a balance needs to be struck between reporting and delivery. I, I want to create an industry based around developing and installing cost-effective and low-carbon improvements to people's homes. Uh, I'm concerned that overly frequent or overly bureaucratic reporting uh, will create an industry based around measuring and com commenting on fuel poverty and not on eliminating it. However, I am mindful uh, that there is a majority view among stakeholders to report more frequently. Uh, I believe that changing the reporting period from the bill's proposed five years to every four years, as Annabel Ewing offers, is a good balance between responsiveness and burden. And so I would propose to members they support amendments 81 and 84 instead of amendments 82 and 85, which will create that further burden. Uh, yes, just briefly, convener. I mean, I, I hear what members say, but uh, you know, I, I do feel that if COSLA further to our stage one report are telling us, look, uh, this will be more onerous for us, and I think it is axiomatic that if you have a more frequent reporting period, that will cost more money. That really uh, goes without saying. So. I uh, also, for one, like the Minister, would prefer to see uh, any spare money absolutely going to frontline ser local services. Uh, and certainly, Mr Simpson. Um, is, is that not uh, an argument then for sticking with five years? Uh, well, what I would say to the member is that uh, we did hear a, a number of views uh, and varying views on the, what the frequency of the reporting should be. And I think it was incumbent on the committee to respond to that. And... Uh, what I'm saying is that in our response to that, I feel, bearing in mind that uh, money would be spent on this and would be taken away from the front line, that the less money taken away from the front line while still still responding to issues raised at stage one evidence uh, would suggest that a four-year period may be more appropriate than a three-year period. Uh, and so I would be moving amendments 81 and 84, convener. Thank you. Very much. The question there for us, amendment 81 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, those in favour of Amendment 81? Those opposed? Okay. Uh, it's two in favour, five against. 
uh, Amendment 81 falls. I call Amendment 82 in the name of Alec Rowley. Already debated with Amendment 81. Alec Rowley to move or not? Yeah, move, please. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 82 be agreed to. Are they all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 82? Five. Those opposed? Two. Uh, amendment 82 uh, stands. Call Amendment 83 in the name of Alec Rowley. Already debated with Amendment 74. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Uh, move, Convener. Those in favour of Amendment 83? Yes. Sorry? Yes, okay. The question is Amendment 83 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Amendment 83 is agreed to. Call Amendment 84 in the name of Annabel Ewing. Already debated with Amendment 81. Annabel Ewing to move or not move? I hit move. The question is that Amendment 84 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment... Eight. Sorry, those in favour of Amendment 84. Sorry. It's been a long meeting. Uh, two, those opposed to Amendment 84. <laughs> Five... Uh, amendment 84 falls. I call Amendment 85 in the name of Alec Rowley. Already debated with Amendment 81. Alec. Thank you. The question is, Amendment 85 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 85? Those five. Those opposed? Two. Amendment 85 is agreed to. I call Amendment 86 in the name of Alec Rowley. Already debated with Amendment 53. Alec Rowley to move or not move? I move, convener. The question is, Amendment 86 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? No. Yes. Can I just check on that? Oh, no, I'm not moving. Sorry. Yes. Not moving. Sorry. Okay. Right. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so, 86 is not being moved. The question is, therefore, that Section 6 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call Amendment 36 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 101. Minister, to move forward. Move, Convener. The question is that Amendment 36 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 36 is agreed to. I call Amendment 87 in the name of Alec Rowley. Already debated with Amendment 101. Alec? Um, I like you. Move. Yes? Move, yeah. Yeah, OK. Uh, the question is, that Amendment 87 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. The 87 is agreed to. The question is, that Section 7 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is, that Section 8 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 89 in the name of Alec Rowley, grouped with Amendment 88. At this point, I'd advise members that Amendments 89 and 88 are direct alternatives. Alec Rowley to move Amendment 89 and speak to both amendments in the group. I thank you, Convener. I, I won't be pressing 89, but I will be pressing 88, uh, which is that the, the fuel poverty target must be presented within a year of the target elapsing, rather than within two years. As drafted, the bill gives ministers two years to report on the target after it was passed. I believe that there will be substantial parliamentary and public interest in whether the target was met and why, and a strong impetus to either continue that good work that has been done or take steps so that the target can be met. Um, it seems to me reasonable that a year should provide sufficient time to gather that evidence and present it so that further steps on energy and fuel poverty can be developed. So, so it brings it forward a year, but uh, I think that's perfectly reasonable and doable. OK, thank you very much. Does any other, any other members have any comments to make? No. Minister? Uh, you... While I understand why Alex Rowley is keen for the report on the 2040 target to be published as soon as possible after the end of 2040, uh, the date that he proposes is simply not feasible. Uh, the target is about what the position is in 2040, uh, and that means all of 2040. So analysis will be gathering data on the target right up until the end of that year. If Parliament has to get this by the 31st of March 2041, we will not be able to give the full picture on whether the target had been met and what percentage of households are still in fuel poverty. And the report will have to be very different to all those before due to the truncation of time. Uh, the results on fuel poverty rates uh, come from the Scottish House Condition Survey. 
these statistics are usually published in the year following the survey. So if we are to use these key national statistics, uh, as we will for all other progress reports, the earliest we will know the 2040 fuel poverty rate will be in December 2041. The survey reporting timetable cannot be condensed to report by 31st of March 2041, uh, as this would not provide sufficient time to complete all of the necessary work. Data is collected from households across Scotland throughout the entirety of 2040. However, the work does not stop there. Once the basic data is collected, modelling needs to be undertaken to estimate the consumption uh, and required fuel bills of the households. Weightings need to be derived to ensure that the results are representative of the Scottish household population. Quality assurance must be undertaken and it's only then that the data can actually begin to be analysed. It's crucial uh, that the statistics from the survey remain robust and continue to meet national statistics standards for quality and integrity. If the date is brought forward by a year to the end of March 2041, this leaves only three months for the entire report to be compiled and this would mean that it could not contain 2040 fuel poverty rates. I would think we would all want Parliament to get a thorough, comprehensive report uh, with all of the detail available and with headline statistics relating to the target year included, which are fully compliant with the National Statistics Co Code of Practice. If the report has to be turned around within a three month time frame, this is not what Parliament will receive. I understand why folks might want an earlier reporting date, but this just isn't feasible, and I therefore ask the committee to vote against Alex Rowley's amendment. Thank you, Alex. Given what the minister says, I think you know I'm, I'm willing. To, I clearly need to go back and look at this, and I'm, have discussion with him if necessary, and come back at stage three. So I, I, I won't move. Happy to provide Mr. with the information he requires and to have further discussions, Convener. Thank you, Minister. Okay. In that case, uh, Alec Rowley wishes to withdraw his amendment. Does any member present object to that amendment being withdrawn? What? No. Which amendment was the 89. 89. Sorry. That amendment is therefore uh, withdrawn. Okay. The... the I call Amendment 88 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 89. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. Thank you. I call Amendment 90 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 53. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. I call Amendment 91 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 53. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Uh, move. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 91 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Those in favour of Amendment 91? One. Those opposed to Amendment 91? Six. Amendment 91 is not agreed to. Call Amendment 92 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 53. Alec Rowley to move or not move? Not move. The, que uh, the question is that Section 9 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Call Amendment 93 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 54. Alec Rowley to move or not move? I move. Thank you. Call Amendment 93A in the name of Graham Simpson, grouped with Amendment 93B. Graham Simpson to move Amendment 93A and speak to both amendments in the group. Um, this will be very brief indeed, Convener. These are just tidying up amendments which relate to um, Alex Rowley's Amendment 93 on the uh, Scottish Fuel Poverty Advisory Board. Um, Alex Rowley's amendment uh, contains uh, the phrase is progress towards meeting the 2032 target, which clearly doesn't, doesn't exist anymore, and the likelihood of meeting the 2032 target. So I've tabled these amendments just as a tidying up exercise to replace that text with the terminology fuel poverty targets, which better reflects what we've already agreed to. Thank you very much, Jim. Anybody else wants to contribute? No. Uh, Minister? 
Briefly, Convener, uh, I mentioned when we discussed Alex Rowley's Amendment 93 last week uh, that while I supported putting the advisory panel in a statutory footing, uh, the wording would need to be refined because it is based on a 2032 target date and that we would take a closer look at costs while keeping a cap. I am therefore pleased that Mr Simpson has lodged the two amendments in this group to correct these references uh, and I am happy to support them. Okay, thank you very much. The question is that Amendment 93A be agreed to. Are we all agreed? 93A is agreed to. I call Amendment 93B in the name of Graham Simpson. Already debated with Amendment 93A. Graham Simpson to move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 93B be agreed to. Are we all agreed? 93B is agreed to. Alec Rowley to press or withdraw Amendment 93 as amended? Yeah, Thank you. The question is that Amendment 93, as amended, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? <coughs> Amendment 93 is agreed to. The question is that Section 10 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. I call Amendment 94 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 54. Alec Rowley to move or not move? A move can be done. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 94 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 94 is therefore agreed to. I call Amendment 37 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 20. Minister, to move formally. Moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 37 is agreed to. I call Amendment 38 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 15. Minister, to move formally. I moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 38 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 38 is agreed to. I call Amendment 95 in the name of Alec Rowley, already debated with Amendment 54. Alec Rowley to move or not move? move Thank you. The question is that Amendment 95 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, amendment 95 is therefore agreed to. I call Amendment 96 in the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Not moved. Not moved. Thank you. The que I call Amendment 97. In the name of Jackie Bailey, already debated with Amendment 57. Not moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 98 in the name of Claudia Beamish, already debated with Amendment 45. Not moved. Thank you. I call Amendment 39 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendment 1. Minister, to move Amendment 39 and speak to both amendments in the group. Uh, convener, both the amendments in this group have the shared motivation of seeking to ensure the provisions of the bill are implemented as soon as possible. Uh, unfortunately, Mr Whiteman's amendment would have significant unintended consequences uh, that would actually hinder implementation uh, and potentially leave us in an unworkable situation. If all the provisions came into force the day after royal assent, uh, as Mr Whiteman's amendment requires, uh, we would not have an operable definition of fuel poverty under Section 2 of the Bill. This is because the enhanced heating regime would not be in place, and neither would the remote and island areas uplift to the minimum income standard. The setting of enhanced heating eligibility and the remote rural and islands MIS requires the Parliament to agree affirmative regulations. It is not within the Government's gift to expedite Parliament's approval of these, so this is not a timetable that we can control. Mr Whiteman's amendment would also bring Sections 3 and 5 of the Bill into force, legally requiring the Government to publish the fuel poverty strategy within a year, forcing us to prepare the strategy without knowing the full detail of the definition of fuel poverty. In addition, Section 4 requires consultation uh, with appropriate people, including those who are living or have lived in fuel poverty. Uh, and this would also be problematic, as we would not be clear on who it was appropriate to consult. The result would be gridlock and the production of a strategy that does not match up properly with the definition of fuel poverty and risks not focusing on the very people who need it most. I'm determined to implement the provisions of this bill as soon as possible. I want to crack on, convener, but considering what the bill proposes and amendments that have been made to the bill by the committee, we cannot have the rigid timetable Mr Whiteman is suggesting. 
I want to ensure the new fuel poverty definition can become operable as soon as possible. My amendment will therefore facilitate the earliest possible uh, completion of work on the enhanced heating regime and allow us to undertake further consultation on it in tandem with the Bill's progress through Parliament. This will allow for faster commencement and implementation of the whole Bill. I have no wish uh, for things to be held up by the legislative process any longer than is absolutely necessary. I want us to get the definition in place, to get the strategy in place, and to get on with the job of helping folks out of fuel poverty. Uh, Mr Whiteman's amendment will cause significant difficulties, whereas in contrast, uh, my own will contribute to a swifter, more eff effective implementation of the bill. So I ask that you support it and vote against Amendment 1. Thank you, Convener. Thank you very much. Uh, Andy Whiteman to speak to Amendment 1 and the other amendment in the group. Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, <clears throat> amendment 1 is uh, lodged in order to um, bring to this committee a debate on the question of commencement. The bill currently in Section 13, which is called commencement, um, says that only this section, i.e. the commencement section, and the short title, Section 14, shall be commenced and uh, come into force on the day after royal um, assent. It's my view that um, bills that are enacted by this Parliament should come into force as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, we are leaving the um, operability of legislation passed by this Parliament uh, in the gift of, 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 of ministers. Um, the Mr Stewart has correctly drawn attention to sections 2, 3, 4 and 5, uh, which cannot come into force the day after royal assent, um, but he's been silent on sections 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, uh, 11 and 12. I appreciate that uh, amendments have been made to this bill today. Further amendments uh, will no doubt be brought at stage 3, uh, and these may have some consequences for a commencement. However, in the absence of any argument as to why um, Section 6 onwards cannot be brought into force, I would invite the Minister in winding up to uh, 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 let me know uh, whether he has any problems with Section 6 uh, onwards um, and what his view would be uh, on an amendment being brought at Stage 3 that would bring the remainder of the Bill uh, into force on the day after royal assent. Thank you. Uh, convener. Okay, you hold on a sorry. second. Is there anybody else who wants to contribute? No, in that case, Minister. Uh, convener, Mr. Whiteman is uh, wanting me to make commitments on parts of the bill that we dealt with only today, uh, and I would have to go back and reflect and consider exactly what the implications of uh, what has happened today is on the bill as a whole. But let me assure. I'll take Mr Whiteman. Uh, I, I appreciate what the Minister has just said and agree. Um, I suppose the, the reassurance I was seeking was that any section of the Bill that can come into force on the day after Royal Assent, having reflected properly on its content, the Minister would be content, would be commenced. Uh, Peter, I will reflect, but I can assure the Committee uh, that, as I said in response to the Committee's report, uh, that the Scottish Government has no intention of causing any unnecessary delay uh, to the commencement of the Bill's provisions. Once the Bill becomes an Act, uh, my intention would be to implement uh, its uh, substantive provisions as soon as is reasonably practi practicable. However, as I have said the timetable for that is not fully within the government's control, uh, as it is reliant on the parliament agreeing affirmative regulations. Um, in relation to my own amendment uh, 39, um, I reiterate uh, that this would allow us to press ahead swiftly with consultation on the enhanced heating regime, which will enable the new definition to become operable sooner. 
Um, it would clearly be perverse if all of the previ previous consultation work on this issue had to be discarded uh, simply because of the point in time in which it was concluded. I would therefore ask the committee uh, to support my amendment and reject Mr Whiteman's uh, amendment uh, and I re uh, reassure you all that as I've said in the response previously to the committee, the Scottish Government has no intention of causing any unnecessary delay uh, to the commencement of the Bill's provisions. Thank you, Convener. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the question is that Amendment 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that Section 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 40 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, to move formally. Moved, Convener. The question is that Amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that Section 12 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. I call Amendment 41 in the name... Sorry, Section 12 was agreed to. I call Amendment 41 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. I Minister. Moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 41 is agreed to. I call Amendment 42 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, to move forward. Moved, Convener. The question is Amendment 42 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. Amendment 42 is agreed to. I call Amendment 1 in the name of Andy Whiteman, already debated with Amendment 39. Andy Whiteman, to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. The question is that Section 13 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? I call Amendment 43 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister? Moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Amendment 43 is agreed to. The question is that Section 14 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Section 14 is agreed to. I call Amendment 44 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 17. Minister, move formally. Uh, moved, Convener. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 44 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Uh, amendment 44 is agreed to. I call Amendment 2 in the name of Andy Whiteman, already debated with Amendment 3. Andy Whiteman, to move or not move? Not moved. Thank you. The question is that the long title be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. In that case, that ends Stage 2, consideration of the Bill. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Minister. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thanks to the committee for their cooperation. Uh, we will have a, a short break to allow the witnesses to leave.
The third item on our agenda today is the consideration of a request to the Committee from the Scottish Government which wishes to consent to the United Kingdom Government legislating using the powers under the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018 in relation to the Town and Country Planning and Electricity Works EU Exit Scotland Miscellaneous Amendments Regulation 2019. At this agenda item, we are being invited to consider whether the instrument has been laid under the appropriate procedure. The instrument has been laid under the negative procedure. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee considered this instrument at its meetings on the 26th of March and agreed that it was appropriate for the instrument to be considered under the negative procedure. Do any members have any comments on it? No. So is the, the committee content for the instrument to be considered under the neg negative procedure then? Yes, Thank you. Uh, the instrument will be considered as part of the next agenda item. Agenda item four is the consideration of the policy merits of the Town and Country Planning and Electricity Works EU Exit Scotland Miscellaneous Amendments Regulation 2019. As this instrument is laid under a negative procedure, this means that its provisions will come into force unless the Parliament votes on motions to annul it. No motions to annul have been laid. As the policy note explains, the intention of this instrument is not to make policy changes. Instead, it makes technical amendments to EU-derived town and country planning and electricity works legislation to address deficiencies arising as a result of EU exit. Do any members have any comments? Thank you. So this is dealing with a no-deal scenario? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, uh, I invite the committee to agree that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to this instrument. Are we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. That concludes the public part of today's meeting. I now move the meeting into private. Thanks very much. <laughs>